Today we talk about circular permutations. Now, before we start talking circular, let's, let's refresh our mind on linear permutations again. In a linear permutation, if I was to look at three seats in a row, I could typically name that first spot to the left as spot one, middle is spot two, and the third one is spot three. And then if I wanted to find the number of arrangements, I'd take three times two times one and get six different arrangements. And we have a definite left and right, whereas in a circle, there's no definite left and right. You can see in this diagram that I've drawn over here, we have these seats numbered one, two, and three, but typically we're gonna be looking at a circle and indistinguishable seats arranged around it or indistinguishable places arranged around it. So in other words, there's no point of reference. If you were to pretend that you've got this circular table in a just a cubicle room with no doors, no windows, it was whitewashed, and then you were to close your eyes, open them up in front of a chair, let's say you're standing at position number two, and then close your eyes, walk around the table a few times, you don't know how many times you've walked around, and then you're standing in front of another, another seat, you don't know if that's seat one or seat two. Everything's indistinguishable, so there's no start, no end, no distinguishable left or right. What distinguishes things is where you initially sit. So for instance, when I sit down, let's say at position number two, I notice to the right, I have position one, and to the left, I have position three. Now, I know that because these are numbered right here, but this is one possible arrangement. And what makes arrangements unique is if there's something different to the right and something different to the left. So if I was to take and renumber this as having two here, one here, and three here around a circle, this is actually the same arrangement as what is given on the left over here because to my right is one and to my left is three. So this is not unique. Thus, we have to change our idea of how to write a formula for the arrangements of a circular permutation. And it turns out if you have n items that you're arranging around a circular table at the same time, the number of permutations is actually n minus 1 factorial. All right. So let's take a look at this now. If I've got, let's say, a key ring, which is something you can pick up, a table you couldn't pick up, you couldn't turn upside down. But a key ring is something you can turn over just by lifting it up and flipping it. If you're able to do that with a circular permutation, then what happens is you reduce the number of arrangements by half. For instance, if I were to take, let's say, and say I have my hand on this key on a key ring, and I look at it and turn the key ring over, I haven't moved any of the keys. Everything is in the same place. So in theory, even though two is moved to the right of me and three is moved to the left of me, the keys are still in the same spot they were before. I've just picked my item up and flipped it over. If you have a circular object that is able to be flipped over, all right, then for instance, here are some examples, a uh, key ring or a bracement, and this is going to become very important, something without a clasp. The number of permutations is basically n minus 1, which is the number of circular permutations, divided by 2. So you got to keep that in mind. So our first example is, is uh, something that you commonly see at a Chinese restaurant, they have these things called Lazy Susans, which is a circular service table kind of in the middle of a, a um, actual old circular table. And it enables you to take and put the food on it and move the food around without passing it. So you can just move that table and it allows the food to spin around and get to somebody else. So they want to know if you put six items on that lazy susan how many ways can those items be arranged on that circle and this is a standard circular permutation problem can't flip the table over wouldn't make sense 
So we wouldn't have a circular permutation divided by two. So we would just basically take the number of items, six, subtract one from it, and throw a factorial on there, which gives us five factorial, and our answer. Now let's say you've got seven chairs arranged around a table. And I didn't put circular table, but let's assume it's a circular table. And you've got seven tan chairs, four white chairs, and one blue chair. We're assuming these chairs are indistinguishable. So now we have repeats that we have to deal with. All right. And in this case, we've got a total of 12 chairs. So to get the number of circular permutations, you'd take 12 minus 1. Row factorial on it, but we have these indistinguishable items. Seven of the tan chairs, so that's seven factorial. Four of the white chairs, and if you wanted to put one factorial, you could, but that's just one. I'll just put it in there for kicks. So this is how we calculate the number of arrangements of those chairs. Now you've got nine keys on a standard key ring. There's no class to it. And you want to know how many arrangements there are. Since this is a key ring, okay, it's something that can be flipped over. So we're going to take in whatever our answer is, we're going to divide that by two. And there's nine total keys. So we take nine minus one to get our circular permutations and divide that by two. So now we've got five charms on a bracelet, and we're going to want to know how many ways you can arrange them if there's no class. Well, we're going to finally find out what the class has to do with this or not. When there's no class, we've said that we can flip this guy over, and we end up having to divide by two. And we take one off our total number of numbers. Throw a factorial on there, and that's the number of circular permutations you have. So this is part A. Now for part B, we're going to say there's a clasp. Now if there's a clasp on a bracelet, that means you can undo the clasp. And what basically happens is when you undo a clasp on a bracelet, you basically get a straight chain. And once you have a straight chain with a point of reference, that's like a linear permutation. So when there's a class, this makes your arrangement linear. So in this case, if I want to arrange all five items on this straight chain, then I have five different positions that I can put those items on. So we have five choices for the first position, four for the second, three for the third, two, and then one for the last, so that's five factorial. So once again, no class on a circular bracelet, bracelet makes it a circular permutation. If there's a class or something that ties the circle together or a point of reference, then that makes it into a linear permutation problem. So now we have a situation where we've got four boys, four girls, they're seated around a table, and we want to know how many ways can you seat these boys and girls if a girl has to be seated first, and then the boys and girls must be seated alternately around the table. All right, well, here's my table. And we have eight seats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different spots. Now remember, the room's blank, white walls, no doorknobs, no nothing. Everything looks the same until you seat one person down. So what we have to do is we actually have to seat a girl before we do anything else. So if we put the girl right here, we've now established 
a point of reference. And then we have to seat the boys and girls alternately. So really, the girls have choices of sitting in one, two, and three different positions. No other way can they be seated. So for the girls, they have three factorial ways to be seated. Three choices for this spot, two choices for this spot, one choice for this spot. Now, the boys and girls must be seated alternately. When we start seating the boys, I have four boys I can sit in this spot right here. And then three boys that I could put in this spot, two boys I could put in this spot, and one boy I could put in this spot. So for the boys, there's four factorial number of ways I can seat them. It turns into kind of a linear permutation because I have this point of reference as the first girl being seated. So we end up with three factorial times four factorial ways to seat the boys and girls. Okay, next we want to take and seat five people around the table, except in this case, two people insist on sitting next to each other. So let's draw our circle out here again, put five spots, and say two of these spots have to sit next to each other. Well, if this is the case, then once again, wherever this first person sits, they create a point of reference. So these other three people, one, two, and three, they have a point of reference to seat next to. You're seating next to this group of two right here. So wherever they decide to sit now creates three factorial ways to seat these other people. We'll call these the others. And then I've got the couple. And wherever this couple decides to sit, they can sit in one of two ways. These people aren't indistinguishable. Let's call this a uh, male and female. I could put my male and female here, or I could put my male and female in this arrangement. So there's actually two ways I could choose to sit them. So that has two factorial ways to be seated. So the total number of ways I can do this is three factorial times two factorial. All right, there's a little taste of circular permutations. I'd like you to go ahead and answer these four questions. And we can uh, discuss these a little bit more tomorrow. See how you do.